Some TTMs and purchases for the 1991 Don Russ set. Big update coming up. Boom. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me. As always, my name is Troy Ryder, aka TTM Troy. And if you are new to the channel, you may not know that I have, uh, a couple years ago, embarked on a quest. And, uh, you know, let's just take a minute right here and I'll tell you why I started the 1991 Don Russ uh, set. <laughs> uh, with a recent interview I did with uh, the Beckett's Fat Packs podcast. So here's just a snippet of that right here. So you brought up you brought up your your ninety one Donra set and I'm, I'm I'm as I'm scrolling through your Instagram account it's beautiful uh, <laughs> two two cards that really caught my eye that, that you posted recently one was the Bulldog Oral Harshizer and mm -hmm. then two Cecil Fielder the Diamond Kings uh, both of those are uh, just icons of my youth baseball right so. Mm -hmm. What what made you decide to go with ninety one Donruss? Is it the blue? I mean, because there's the green rookie set, right? What what made you go with that? Because personally, and it, it, it's hideously ugly, but the ninety one flare is the way I would have went because of that mustard yellow. But mm -hmm. uh, but let's talk about let's talk about ninety one Donruss. I <laughs> I think honestly, what it was was um, there is a movie memorabilia store in Simi Valley, California. And it's run by, oh my gosh, I can't think of the guy's name, but his son was in the movie, A Christmas Story. Okay. He played sure. one of the, I think he played Flick in A Christmas Story. Anyway. Scotty Schwartz, so, Scotty Schwartz is who you're talking Schwartz, about. Scotty Schwartz's yeah. dad. Yeah. Scotty Schwartz's yeah. dad. So he has this awesome TV and movie shop and he has baseball mm -hmm. autographs and everything. And I went in there, I actually did a tour on my YouTube channel. And for whatever reason, I saw this huge thing of, uh, uh, what do you call them, cello packs? Of, yeah, cello packs, yeah. Yeah, of <laughs> Don Russ. So I just bought a, bought a ton of them. And then I was like, I'll try sending them out. And I just kept getting them back. And I got so many back, I was like, this is interesting. And so right. th that's when I started buying um, factory sets. You know, I've gone through about three or four factory sets trying to get everybody um <laughs> at this point and it's just it's just fun you know some of those like the i did buy what you said the cecil fielder and the oral hershizer you know those were purchases but the oral hershizer man i mean you could say it's it's from the junk era but that is a sharp yeah bright card and the blue just pops on it and one of the things with modern cards is you know um you can get them back blur, uh, like blurry, uh, smeared if you don't prep them right, right certain cards. But the old stuff, it, it's not coded, and so everything just sticks there pretty much. Right. So that's kind of what why I went with that. I do have a friend on Instagram, Chase, who is doing the 91 Fleers. So um, he's been sending out a lot of his checklists to umpires. Um, and I started doing that just to see who he got back and trying to complete some of my checklists too, because the checklist count is part of the 770. So, right. <laughs> so it, it's getting tougher. I won't lie. And especially with the Nolan Ryan's, the Ken Griffey's and the Daryl strawberries. So, so uh, funny that you brought up Scott Schwartz because just today uh, a coworker and I were talking about Scott Schwartz. Uh, how great of a childhood do you have to have? to spend a, a, a good portion of it with Jackie Gleason and Richard Pryor. <laughs> Are you serious? Were you really just talking about Scott Schwartz? That is amazing. Yeah, we really were. Because he's, <laughs> he's been on the show before, and we, we were just talking about – Oh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, he, I, I, this, these were his words. You can go back and listen to the show if you want to. But he said we – were, uh, we were talking about buying cards, and he said uh, – he said, everything I buy is hobby. I don't buy that retail stuff. I'm Jewish. I don't do that. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's uh, and, you, Mr. Schwartz. <laughs> yeah, and, and he had they do have a lot of baseball stuff in their shop, too. Like, even uh, packs, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that, that they find and everything. It's an amazing story. His dad actually was in the Army with Elvis. So he, he has some right. good... 
he has some good stories about that. But uh, yeah, I met Scott a few times. He's he, he was a fun character. But that store is just amazing. I I could sit there uh, forever. I used to live in Simi Valley before they moved there, and I'm kind of glad they weren't there when I was there because. I'd be over there. Um, the, the only other thing about Simi Valley was it was the home of uh, Letty Dykstra's car wash at one time, too. But, oh, good you know. grief. <laughs> it's a true, true, story. Uh, true story. True story. <laughs> so if you want to subscribe to the Fat Packs podcast, you can find their link down below. I really appreciate them taking the time to talk to me and, and talking about why I started off this uh, crazy 1991 Don Russ set. And it really was a... Um, a fluke. I didn't set off to to do a, a set, you know, especially a 770 card set. Um, man, uh, I would have picked something a little smaller, to be honest with you, like a 188 or whatever. But hey, it is going fantastic and uh, got some TTMs in for the set, as well as some purchases that I wanted to share with you. And so I could get those scanned, get them up on the website and uh, into my binders and all of that fun stuff. So let's go to the TTMs first. And there are a few things in here that are kind of cool. So here you go. Here's the first one. Boom. All right. First, we have Greg Kosick. I hope I said that right. <laughs> he signed one of one in 108 days via his home address. Now, his address is on Star Tiger. He is actually a Major League Baseball umpire. Now, I sent this uh, checklist card on October 26th of 2019 and received it on February 11th of 2020. Now, he was an umpire in Major League Baseball from 1976 to 1999. And he actually officiated the 87 and 98 World Series and the 81 and 92 All-Star Games. And during his career, he wore number 18, which you can see right there on the card. Now, he and the fellow umpire Al Clark were the first American League umpires who never used the outside chest protector. They had used the inside one uh, exclusively from their uh, during their career. Now, I actually uh, never paid attention to the chest protectors. You know, you always saw the people with the with the big black thing that they hold up. And of course, now most people have the inside one. But if you're interested on the history of the chest protector, uh, definitely you can find that on Wikipedia. It's, it's pretty interesting. I read it before doing this video, but let's go back to, Mr. to Greg here. <laughs> um, yeah, he was actually the first base umpire for Len Barker's perfect game and was also an official for Mike Witt's perfect game. So uh, there you go. So thank you, Greg. Really appreciate that, signing this checklist card, because even the checklists need to get signed. Next, we have an all-star, Will Clark. He signed one of one in 30 days via the Giants. Obviously, this address is not valid right now, so uh, just take that into consideration. <laughs> now, I actually sent this on September 18th, 2019, and received it on October 18th, 2019, so while the last season was actually going on. Now, Mr. Clark played from 1986 to 2000 for the Giants, the Rangers, the Orioles, and the Cardinals. He's a six times All Star, a Gold Glove winner, a two times Silver Slugger winner, and a Golden Spike Award winner. And his number actually was, uh, or is set to be retired this season whenever the season does get started. Uh, as well as he also won a silver medal in the 84 Olympics. I didn't know that until I researched it and put it here in this video. So uh, during his career, he ended with a 303 average with 2,176 hits, 284 home runs, and 1,205 RBIs. Mr. Will Clark. Next, we have Alex Cole. Now, Alex Cole, this is an interesting one. I'm... Um, uh, I'm going to tell you to check Star Tiger on this. And there is an address actually on fanmail.biz, but that is listed as no longer valid on Star Tiger, even though there's a uh, success for it. So definitely I would get the Star Tiger address, if anything. Now, uh, I sent this in September 6th, 2019, and received it on March 9th of 2020. Now, Mr. Cole played from 1990 to 96 for the Indians, the Pirates, the Rockies, the Twins, and the Red Sox, and then he went to the Miners for a while. Now, his Major League debut was on 5-22-96, 
and he ended his career with a 280 average with five home runs and 117 RBIs. Mr. Alex Cole. Next, we have Stan Belinda. He actually returned two different returns, one of one in 664 days and one of one in 134 days, both via his home, and both were received on January 30th of 2020. Now, Mr. Belinda uh, played from 1989 to 2000 for the Pirates, the Royals, the Red Sox, the Reds, the Rockies, and the Braves, and he actually made his MLB debut on September 8th of 2000, or 1989. Sorry about that. Now, he ended his career with a win-loss record of 41-37 and 37, with a 4.15 and ERA and 622 strikeouts. Now, currently, Mr. Belinda is suffering from multiple sclerosis, which could attribute to the, the long wait time on the one. So I really appreciate him returning not only one, but two returns. So uh, definitely want to thank Mr. Belinda for that. And his nephew, Jacob, uh, actually plays in the Braves organization. So that is pretty cool, keeping it all in the family right there. So thank you, Mr. Stan Belinda. Next, we have Paul Assenmacher. He signed one of one and one of one two different times in 646 days and 138 days via his home. And these were both received on the same day uh, <laughs> by me on January 21st of 2020. Now, he played from 1986 to 99 for the Braves, the Cubs, the Yankees, the White Sox, and the Indians. He actually made his Major League debut on April 12th of 1986. So there you go. He's considered a very good fielding pitcher and has been a pitching coach for St. Pius Catholic School, Catholic High School in Atlanta. So very happy to get that in. Thank you so much, Paul Assenmacher. Next we have Alejandro Pena. Now he too signed uh, two different returns that one I thought was lost, so I sent again. Uh, he signed one of one and one of one in 727 and 147 days. And he is asking now for a $3 donation per card. So please keep that in mind. You will want to send $3 if you are sending to Alejandro Pena and that address is on Star Tiger. Now he played from 1981 to 1996 for the Dodgers, the Mets, the Braves, the Pirates, the Red Sox, the Marlins, uh, again with the Braves and then again with the Marlins. Uh, he is a two times World Series champion, both in 1988 and 95. That would be for the Dodgers uh, and the Red Sox, right there. And he, along with Ken Merker and Mark Wallers, combined for a no hitter on September 11th of 1991. And uh, after that, he missed 1993, and he actually was not on the roster for the Braves which would have given him a, another World Series. But there you go, Alejandro Pena. So now I have some purchases that I have gotten in. Now there are a lot of them, so I'm going to go over them very quickly, but I do want to, uh, I, I had to scan them anyway, so I'm scanning them in for you, uh, but I'm gonna go over them very quickly. I haven't, uh, other than the certified one, I haven't really uh, looked at them uh, very closely for authenticity, but I think they are good. I did some preliminary stuff, and uh, if I ever get things uh, certified, I guess I'll, I'll find out. But I'm gonna call these, check these off the list just in case, and I will start with, we have Chuck Krim, we have Ruben Sierra, we have Rob Deere, we have Don Slot, we have Stan Javier, we have Pete Inconviglia, Ron Darling, Andy Bennis, Jeff Conin, Chris Gwynn, Kevin Wickender. I have a card from a friend of mine, actually, from Andy Summers, Tim Wallach. This one is actually signed on the back by Fred McGriff. We have Dave Smith, Jose Mesa, Sandy Olimar, Alomar, sorry. Eric Anthony, Al Leiner, Kirk McCaskill, and Dave Stewart. 
So there you have it. Those are my 1991 Don Ross updates. Hopefully you enjoyed those. Uh, it's getting, I'm almost under 200 now that I need, which means I have uh, right around 550 of the 770. Well, no, I have about 570 of the 770 uh, that are in the set. So things are starting to get slim. Uh, I am going to have to probably pop on some uh, $60 Nolan Ryans here soon. And who knows how I am ever going to get the Barry Bonds uh, who knows? I have not seen any for sale, and uh, if they ever come up, they're definitely going to be pretty darn expensive. So who knows? Uh, yeah, that's going to be hard. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that update on my 1991 Don Russ. If you want to see more and see all of the pretty pictures, you can go to my website, ttmautograph.com, and pull down the menu that says Cards by Set and go to 1991 Don Russ, and there you can see scans of all of the 1991 Don Russ I have, and it's pretty cool just to to watch it and scroll down, if I do say so myself. it's It's been a long road getting from there to here. There, there's your bonus for staying until the end of the video. <laughs> if you can call that a bonus, I don't know. Thank you so much, everybody. Hopefully you are having a great day, and uh, yeah, uh, we're still kind of waiting to see what's going to happen with baseball, um, as well as conventions and everything else aren't we so we'll just have to wait and see thank you so much and may your mailboxes be full and your stamps forever Bye bye